Welcome to the Evolvepreneur AI Advantage Show, and I'm your host, Richard Ray. My mission is to help entrepreneurs understand AI and use it to their advantage. Join me today where we dig deep with our guests and get you the best concepts and strategies. Today's special guest is Lubo Kuchuk. Lubo is an operational and outsourcing expert and helps businesses and business owners get their life back and achieve freedom. He was involved in exciting improvement processes and implementations in many global businesses around the globe, like Mars, Burger King, DHL, and Rocket Internet. Now he is helping small and medium businesses get efficiency and financial freedom via outsourcing. Today, we are talking about our journey from first industrial revolution to AI. Lubo, welcome to the show. Hello, everyone, and thank you, Richard, for having me. So welcome, everyone. Lubo, really great to have you here. And I ask all my guests, where in the world are you? Well, I'm in a a very beautiful place. So I'm in Sydney in Australia. So it's a very nice sunny weather today. So thank you for asking me about you. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm just up in Brisbane. So it's uh, it's not quite as warm today. So I think you're getting the best of it. So uh, unusual. It's normally the other way around. So Lubo. Let's get into this. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us a little bit about your history and background and how you got to where you are doing cool things today. Well, Richard, thank you for asking. You just need to tell me when I should stop about my journey. So um, it's all about you, Lubo. So you you just tell us. um, I was born in a small country in Eastern Europe, in Moldova. It's a small country between Romania and Ukraine. Uh, I spent a lot of time in Russia. Uh, I was working for many big uh, companies like Mars, Burger King, launching uh, in Russia. I started working for Rocket Internet and done projects in Germany. And in 2015, I came to Australia, uh, working for Iconic, working for DHL, implementing like uh, several uh, multi-million dollar uh, implementations, automations. Mm-hmm. Um, I was overlooking uh, 43 warehouses in DHL in Australia, uh, being as a director of implementations and innovations. Um, and uh, yeah, learn a lot of uh, a lot of things about uh, industrialization, automation, uh, and as well uh, about different type of AR, uh, AI, uh, uh, and how. Are you working in AR as well, augmented reality? Yeah. Oh yeah, of course. Like so, it's like it's uh, it's probably it's not me. It's someone else. Like right now, and uh, um, but look, like uh, we used to have like uh, some kind of like a uh, very interesting uh, tools uh, how to control the uh, machine and robots um, mm-hmm. in in automation, and this is where we used to use some uh, AR glasses just to be able to 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 dig through the right tunnels. No, I understand. Ah. Uh, it's one of my other pet topics is uh, augmented reality. So maybe we'll talk about that later. Oh. But today is all about AI. So uh, tell us a little bit more about the topic today, our journey from first industrial revolution to AI. Uh, uh, I think it's uh, a lot of people right now are talking about just AI and what is uh, happening around AI and how it's affecting the uh, the people, population, the humanity, and uh, some people are afraid about AI. Uh, and uh, uh, again, been in different companies, and uh, uh, I know that uh, similar type of things was happening before. And this is where I was like, my topic is like the journey from the first industrial revolution to AI. And maybe like just like a, some kind of reminding uh, maybe to everyone and maybe it will be something new uh, that why we have like a several industrial revolutions and the first one was a steam one so mm-hmm. when steam was invented and if you think uh, about uh, steam uh, so this is where uh, the train were available when you have like a vessel that not with just sails uh, you know like moving because of the uh, wind but you have like already like some vessels that was going up to the river because they have like as well like a steam power machine mm-hmm. uh, so it was really like a, a revolution a revolutionized a lot of things and especially in manufacturing and this is where uh, a lot of like a small uh, let's say business owners or entrepreneurs at that time in whatever in 700 in 800 uh, if they were not adapting, 
uh, they were losing their jobs. And this is mm -hmm. actually when you have a lot of like migration of population from the rural areas to cities. And this is how big cities be, like uh, were growing because of manufacturing and because of logistics, because of train. But many people were afraid about steam, about what was happening with, uh, with this type of machinery. Uh, and then we came to the second industrial revolution that was related with electricity. So this is when electricity was invented. And again, uh, like uh, it was like uh, uh, many people were afraid about a different type of uh, electric potential dying from electricity, but they were uh, fascinating about the light that you can have like a, a light not only because of the sun but you can have light uh, when it's dark on you and this is where uh, again this is a, another wave of a lot of invention uh, where again some people were able to adapt to change to implement um, some additional machinery and this is where uh, automation has started uh, and this is again when uh, Henry Ford started to have a conveying uh, type of uh, uh, production manufacturing when uh, you can choose whatever car you want and whatever color you black. want. Yeah, that's right. So, but this is like it's uh, if you think about how uh, uh, how the industry was uh, innovating, and again, a lot of probably motor company or car company has disappeared because of this. And uh, this is exactly like in my case, because I used to work in Mars and Mars, they started with uh, producing chocolate bars in their kitchen. And they very soon realized that they can, them, those chocolates are very, they're great, people are buying. So they need to have someone else that are producing those chocolates and they need to focus on sales. They shouldn't just doing the production themselves. And very soon they realized that they need to they can put some additional machinery to produce those chocolates. And uh, nowadays you have like a big factories that actually they are operated. You don't have any cookers and you don't have kitchens. You have like a, you have operators that are managing the machines. Um, and again, if you think about how uh, different business entrepreneurs were adapting and how business entrepreneurs were embracing those uh, uh, revolutions that were happening and implementing those tools, ideas. Uh, uh, so this is, uh, they have not only survived, but they have overtaken their competitors. Um, then we have uh, uh, the third industrial revolution when uh, uh, we have a lot of like uh, electronics uh, was started to produce when computers were invented. And this is where you can have this machinery actually was controlled not only by humans, but you have some algorithms, you have PLCs, you have programming, programming tools that can, can control your, uh, your conveyors and can divert. Um, uh, and this is like the, the third industrial revolution. Uh, but again, like it's, um, I'm, why I'm trying to compare with AI is with, this is where, uh, you know, nowadays many uh, people, they are afraid uh, what AI yeah, is going to be a new matrix, it's, it's good, going to be a termination of the world, uh, or, <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, and uh, again, or like coming with this example of Industry 3.0, then when, um, when uh, 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 again, business owners that are able to adapt, they're able to change, they're able to survive, but they're able to overtake other businesses. Um, so, well, industry for zero is uh, already when we have uh, not only computers, but we have like a much more automation. We have like a smart factories, and this is uh, in in the beginning of uh, this century. So, like it's uh, uh, beginning of two thousand. This is what industry for zero was. What what when it was when it's happening, mm -hmm. uh, and again, this is where if you think about um, uh, different another level of automation when, for example, in warehouse, you don't have already people going to bring, to, to, to look for, for goods, to pick and pack, you have already goods to person. So you have like a goods are delivered to person and then the person need to just to, to, to pick and pack. So this is industry for zero. Uh, and if you think, uh, or if you look into big fulfillment centers of Amazon, uh, so this is again about- And they're the going to be fully automated as well at some point. They're trying to get there, aren't they? 
well so well that's right so this is where uh, it's coming again that it's even you you may not need to have even uh, humans do the packing because you may have like a packing machines already right now that can do the, the packaging and can decide what kind of size of packaging um so again um, I, I think when um, again, I've, I've been in this type of industrialization and I've seen a lot of changes myself uh, and uh, in fulfillment centers, I was trying always to change the mentality from the warehousing to, to fulfillment and how to optimize, how to implement efficient uh, solution. Um, so this is where uh, now I think we are coming to industry 5.0. This is what probably is not yet coming, but this is where we have AI. Um, and uh, like if you think in the beginning when you have like a, a industry um, uh, one zero when you have like a steam was discovered and now you have like a steam cookers that you can probably can give some commands uh, and you can give some can get some uh, recipes and that they can be cooking themselves uh, so this is where uh, the journey like and this like i mean i can talk a lot about this journey about different stages of industrialization uh, but I think the main topic is that in every type of uh, every every wave of this revolution or every cycle of this revolution, there are entrepreneurs that were embracing, adapting, and not only surviving but overtaking the competitors. And there are other entrepreneurs that are not able to adapt. They say, "Well, this team is not for me." The quality is not there. The automation uh, is not something that I want to have. And probably those businesses, unfortunately, has have disappeared. Um, and this is what well, this is my uh, explanation of the journey from the first industrial revolution to AI where we are today. Well, let, let's look at some of the things you've talked about there, because, you know, you, you talk about, um, you know, the invention of the steam engine. Uh, you, you talk about, you know, uh, uh, distribution of uh, products. So let's just you know start off with you know transporting uh, goods around the world or within a country. In the UK, it was primarily done with canals, and those canal boats were usually moved along by a horse. So you'd have a horse actually on the side of the uh, the canal, and it would pull them along. And as you say, then they were replaced with small steam engines, which was fantastic because that meant that you know you could do a lot more. That it could run through the night. The horse wouldn't get tired because the horse wasn't there anymore. But of course, then that meant that people who did look after the horses weren't needed quite so much. So you can see a great analogy there. But then we talk about the electrical revolution that you mentioned. And there were competing standards, of course. You know, famously, Tesla and Edison were fighting over DC versus AC. And, you know, I believe an elephant uh, came the wrong side of that one as part of that story as well. There's some uh, truly awful stories that go with it. But each time, there's always somebody that gets impacted in a negative way there's always somebody who is trying to spin a story edison trying to say that ac electricity was far more dangerous than dc as an example so are you seeing the same sort of things happening now with ai you know people are spinning stories to try and protect themselves or push their own ideas uh, and also are people also trying to protect their industries i'm sure that there is you know, good examples of people who looked after horses trying to say, oh, no, steam engines are going to do terrible things. Yeah, look, uh, Richard, amazing examples. And I love uh, uh, the Edison and Tesla stories as well. And, you know, like there is even like, you know, different interpretation of their uh, journey and probably a bit, a bit of fight that was happening between them yeah. um, and commercial uh, decision and uh, I think the influence. Uh, and as well, so like if you think about this, like in, in a cycle, so what was uh, again um, uh, Edison with uh, his uh, type of electricity and the Tesla? DC, he was about, all about DC, of course, yeah. But now you have the batteries, love. So now you're getting back into into another cycle or another wave of batteries. So you don't need uh, uh, this DC when you're using batteries in in a lot of cars. Um, so it's yet again a... Tesla is in that mix in some way. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, look, I uh, agree with this, and, and I think uh, the uh, I think the there is a bit there are a lot of competition in this area, and there are a lot of uh, people that they are not accepting. Um, uh, but 
And as I'm saying, like it's like nowadays, if you're not accept, you will be not be surviving uh, because this is like it's uh, uh, for not it's and and think in this way, it's uh, uh, it, it, the history is already showing, and in my example, like already like a full industrial revolution. I'm saying, well, things are happening, and you just need to adapt. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, like a horses, and uh, you're absolutely right. So like think in this way that. The horses still need to rest, and and in logistics, I know like even people need to rest, and uh, you have like a shifts, and you need to have shifts in uh, whatever a morning shift, like you have an afternoon shift, uh, and uh, uh, especially like when Click Frenzy Black Friday is coming, you have a lot of uh, a lot of uh, orders that how can you fulfill them, and this is where when you have like a at 24-7, so I have implemented 24-7 uh, automation facility back in Russia, in Europe, uh, and in Australia, but it means that you have less dependency of uh, of uh, people because the machines are working. Um, in my experience in Mars, you have as well, um, so you have, so we have like a factories, they were working 24-7, you're not able to stop a chocolate factory because you need to clean all the uh, all the chocolates from inside because it's it's working for one week it's producing Mars another week it's producing sneakers so you're not able to stop a, a, a production line um, so this is where uh, uh, nowadays you have AI tools that can work for you when you're not there um, and probably <clears throat> I'm probably not touched it too much. So like I'm, I'm still like in, in outsourcing and outsourcing is this is when you are delegating a lot of uh, responsibility and, and something to someone else. And this is what I'm with my examples with Mars. So you can do those chocolates themselves or you can hire some people to, to produce those chocolates. And then, or you can build a factory that can do the chocolates and you have operators that can, that can overlook on these machines. Um, so the same is probably with coming with a lot of things that you can give away and you can, especially for the busy entrepreneurs, you can, um, you can delegate to someone else, you can automate and as well, like you, you may have still, we have, uh, so when we have horses, so you have like a someone that can, can, can ride those horses or when we have a bus we still have a bus driver we're gonna have that bus driver but that's potentially going to go away we've already seen you know self-driving cars <coughs> so, Correct. I, I remember watching uh it was the movie logan you know the hugh jackman's last uh film as wolverine where you had self-driving trucks out on the road and it seemed obvious well there is even one like i mean if you can go on amazon prime and you can watch upload and you can you can see like the upload when uh, all the brains are moving into into ar and when you use you have a lot of ai uh tools not tools but the ai um android based mm -hmm. things that well, be careful talking. what you say because i'm only halfway through the third season so no spoilers no spoilers please <laughs> oh so you watched okay well then <laughs> um so um but, but this is where, like, think about the customer service. So this is where you still can do like this collaboration and think about the cost efficient solution. And especially what, when, what I am implementing to many businesses that you may have, uh, uh, so you may have like a, a human agent that is mm -hmm. responding. And previously, this human was able to respond, for example, I don't know, like 20 tickets per hour because he was looking for a lot of information. So now there are a lot of tools that are bringing this information up front or even are giving to a customer to find those answers themselves. Like, or, or this is where you have like a... a but is, a, it presented yeah, as a, is it presented as if they were speaking to a person still? It's, it's again, so this is like, a, you, you still can have a choice. So you can have like a, a, a AI tools that are uh, giving like a lot of help mm -hmm. and still thinking that you may still have like a, as well like a, humans that can teach them and this is again you can have a teachers for ai um, tools or you can have like a leaders for ai tools or you can have navigators for them uh, so for, for me it's like it's still like a, a combination between oh sorry it's a combination be between uh uh between 
journey or having like a, a, a journey together, a human and AI. Uh, and this is how you can so it's a companion your... it's an assistant yeah. it's not necessarily taking your job away from you it's helping you yeah. well that's right so it's uh, th this is what uh, um, <laughs> this is what we are doing this is what we are implementing and this is what we are bringing a lot of systems to many uh, biz entrepreneurs and, and think about the cost of the cost of the entering entering into the business um, in Again, with my example, with big steam machines or big trains. So who can who can build such kind of thing? Only the uh, let's say business owners at the time with big pockets of money. With electricity, it was the same. With automation, it was nearly the same. What is bringing right now? It's actually is leveling. Like so, now we don't need to have like a such kind of much more uh, resources to start a new business. Uh, or to develop something, so it's it's the entry level is reduced, and this is where, from one hand, you can have like a, a lot of entrepreneurs can do their business. From another hand, you have a lot of, co of competition because previously it was only like a big big manufacturing. It was only Ford. It was General Motors. So now you have a lot of like a, you have a lot of Chinese company coming with machines. Um, but hold on, you, you, just, you just said something that's really interesting there. I think this is very, very interesting. I'm a big fan of AI from the point of view in, in that if you can grab hold of it and use it, you can do things that you've never been able to do before. It enables you to do some great things. But suddenly, you're in a battlefield with so many more people because they're also grabbing hold of AI. So is it a case of the talent will really bubble to the top? If everybody's using AI all of a sudden it's about who's got the best ideas who's the best or is it a case of who's got the best ai uh look i fully agree with you richard i think and uh, we even have found so again like a, for my current business that when we are providing a lot of cost efficient uh, experts from overseas to mm -hmm. uh, to business owners in australia us uk uh, so what we are finding is that uh, the Experts that we are finding in whatever in Philippines, in Ukraine, or in Colombia, mm -hmm. they know about AI already much more than some busy entrepreneurs here. Okay. Uh, so one, like, and I was thinking just why this is happening, uh, and sometimes you find that the a business owner he doesn't have time to run a business and to learn as well, yeah, uh, and as well to implement something, and. And this is what we are finding that our experts already, especially those ones that used to work in different companies, they have used AI tool here, they have used something here, they have used like a different even LinkedIn outreach or like a auto like a scheduler, mm -hmm. or I mean like a like probably different um, uh, chat GPT version or like a general variation AI. of that. Yeah, exactly. So, and this is what you're finding. Well. Because they have tried, you know, like the same as you, if you're driving, or, um, so if you used to drive a motorbike, if you used to drive a, a car, if you have, in case you maybe you uh, have experience to drive an SUV and a probably a sport car, so you're becoming a more experienced. So this is where we are finding that people that are embracing and like, again, like we have those experts that they have tried different AI tools and when they're coming to some of the businesses they're actually bringing a lot of ideas that those entrepreneurs never thought about them that's really uh, interesting so lubo can you give me an example of i say a golden customer uh you don't have to name names where you've come along and you've used some of the approaches that you've talked about today and really helped them out really turn things around for them well look so we we have a lot of e-commerce business owners that they used to uh Again, they're saving millions of dollars uh, because one, they're not spending time in the recruiters, they're not spending time in HR people, they're not spending time in managing everything. So we have AI tool that are controlling even like so we have our you can see if the our experts are working or not working. So how many strokes they're doing, uh, how what they're doing their screen. So and what we found that some of uh, our senior owners they say well. Actually, I want to have a tool here for my company because during COVID, when I was trying to have a Zoom call, someone said, oh, he's not turning on the camera. And when he turned on the camera, so he was on Bondi Beach instead of uh, <laughs> home. So um, 
so a lot of like uh, little things but um think about the uh, dictation and, and video tool that mm -hmm. we have right now uh, so we have some uh, buyers agents that they used to do like like just i'm giving in a simple term like a, in real estate 20 inspections per week you can do mm -hmm to before lunch to after lunch five days per week you can do 20 inspections with using our uh, virtual assistants together with the ai tool they were able to dictate all the feedbacks about those properties and together with the ai and with those virtual assistants all the information already was coming and structuring into different system selling well this is a nice property near to the beach this is a nice property near mm -hmm. to the whatever in the mountains and suddenly this uh, buyer agent was able to do like a 40 inspections per week what How does many? it mean 40 so he was doubling from 20 wow to 40. that's pretty impressive so this is where like he was able to present to his clients twice more objects that that he actually was able to give to them and this is where well in six months he hired another two runners like buyer agents in mm -hmm. australia having another VA with AI tools that was helping them. So now he's having actually already six uh, in Sydney and he's opening a new office in Melbourne with another two, two buyers agent. Because now they're doing together with a combination of virtual assistants and AI tools, they're able to not only triple, quadruple their business. So they are, they are growing so fast and this is how they're overtaking the competitors. But they are actually hiring people as a result of using AI. Yeah. So I'm telling you, it's, it's a, it's a, uh, how it's like a, it's a, it's a journey together. So you, you need to have someone mm -hmm. still to be able to a bit digest, a bit check, to do a bit of like a structure, and and you have those tools are evolving every day. So like it's a. Uh, so, I mean, Evolvepreneur uh, uh, projects that we are here right now. So, it's, everything is evolving every day. And again, like, uh, are you able to cope with the speed of evolving? Uh, are you able that, that's, to a, that's a huge challenge, just full stop. I mean, the question I've got to ask you, though, uh, Lubo, is, you know, you've talked about a lot of different things and that you really very clearly to me have an understanding of history and you know you, you've learned from that and i think everybody else should learn too because you know if we look at history we can learn a lot and predict what's going to happen in so many ways uh but what's that one piece of advice that you would want people to take away from today um well it's a good question so i think um, with my previous examples of uh, embracing uh, adapting and uh, accepting so this will be the best piece of advice um uh because if you're not in you're out uh, i'll probably like put like in, in a simple <laughs> questions and this uh, uh, it is uh, related to uh, both va and ai so it's uh, outsourcing is used by many companies for uh, more than 30 years right now so it's uh, big companies like amazon accenture that SaaS is using from more than more than 30 years from 1992. Uh, the same is with ai tool so uh, you need to learn, um, you need to delegate a lot of things and you need to adapt. And this is like a, just learn, delegate and, uh, and take those tools in your journey. And this is how you will succeed. So this sounds very much like, you know, the, the major companies, they were the only ones to be able to afford a computer to start off with as an example. And then eventually people got eight bit computers at home and then it went from there. You're talking about the sort of ways that people are outsourcing. Big companies have been doing that, and now small small companies, or even on, you know, solopreneurs can outsource very easily through the use of AI. Look, you're absolutely right. So, like, it's like we didn't touch this topic too much, but you think like so, like 30 years ago, to have a customers call centers in India or in the Philippines, so you need to have a lot of technology, mm -hmm. uh, much security, even like lines with cables to have those like a phone technology. So nowadays you don't need to have uh, such kind of heavy infrastructure. So you're able to run your, to, to launch your VA without opening a, a legal entity. And then you put a combination with AI tool that, that they can, um, well, 
I mean, uh, work for you in your zero, in your in your QuickBooks and your LinkedIn and your CRM. Uh, manage the workflow, send automated emails, even generate like a blogs and topics uh, in your different posts. Um, so this is where you, you can use this combination. So as, many different options there, yeah. And the cost of entry is not as used to be 30 years ago. Lubo, tell me where can people find you and what exciting projects do you have on the horizon? Um, Look, so uh, of course you can find me on LinkedIn. So you go and you find uh, Lyubo Kuchuk on LinkedIn. Uh, you find me on Remo Staff website. So it's www.remostaffwf.com. Um, and uh, yeah, it's my phone number is, uh, you know, cell is 0439-008107. And of course you can always uh, reach uh, Richard and Richard probably <laughs> will give like a sum. More than my... happy to help out some of my details if anyone need to find more about um, cost effective solution logistics operations customer service um, regarding some future plans so uh, uh, so uh, you know black friday is coming christmas mm -hmm. sales is coming so we are helping many business owners to upload a lot of products or more products and this is where a lot of companies are able to triple their sales uh, i'm going to run a webinar in uh, two weeks time it will be uh, and i can send you a link uh, or someone will reach me i will provide you more details how you can get more sales uh, before christmas sounds great well Lubo, really great talking to you we've touched on so many things i never thought i would be talking about horses and canal barges on the ai advantage show so this has been a great conversation well, sounds good, Richard. So yes, so this is why you probably need to come to Advantage Show, and uh, and uh, uh, maybe you can find more about the journey from the first industrial revolution to uh, AI. Thank you. Well, that's a wrap on another awesome guest episode for the Evolpner AI Advantage Show. Just before you go, if you like this episode, we would be very grateful for a five-star review. Please also consider recommending the show to a friend or two. Make sure you subscribe for future episodes at AIadvantage.show right now. Until next time, I'm Richard Ray, and if you're an entrepreneur, get the AI Advantage today.